All right, man, let's talk some NBA. I do appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video, and I appreciate the love and support, man. Check out our NBA Talk playlist for more videos like this and our NBA one-on-one -on -one playlist for our live stream. So as the NBA kick off, we have more live streams and we'll react. But uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Zion Williamson. Is it too or is it premature that he's gracing the cover of 2K21 and basically the artificial push that they're giving him um, and also, we're going to talk about how much um, the NBA is spending on the bubble, how much they kind of saving, too. And also, we're going to get into what Damian Lillard had to say about uh, not being 100% confident. Also, Stephen A. Smith, that all the players are going to follow the rules. So, let's talk about it. Appreciate everybody. Best way to donate to the channel is to share the video. And what was said, let's start it off with the money, right? They're spending, I believe, over $150 million during the bubble. But the players will be able to save six hundred million dollars in salary, so you know that's really the big thing that NBA was going to recoup that six hundred million dollars in salary. They're going to lose the ticket sales, but you know with TV money and all that type of stuff, they're going to make a lot of money back. So um, the layout is they got twenty-two teams staying in a few hotels. Um, they will have activities, DJ, uh, uh, video games, ping pong. No other players. Are allowed to visit other people's uh, other people's rooms. Um, pretty much outside of that, there'd be a housing. I mean, sheltering, feeding, and they will be doing Corona tests. You know, damn near every day um, for over, I think, fifteen hundred people. You got staff, you got coaches. Um, you know, so like I said before, it's a lot of money, but they see it, saving a lot of money. They'd be playing at three different arenas they got several different practice facilities that they do have as well um so it's costing them a lot of money to re up to to, to, to really re-kick this up but what you got to understand it takes money to make money you know so they got to take the risk and they're going to lose some money you know for not having you know people be able to watch um the games and the stands but you know at the end of the day it must have made enough sense where they got to make enough money back to pretty much save the season and also this may be somewhat of a uh you know test run for how they're gonna kick off the 2021 season which i heard it may start december 1st it may start next year it may start on christmas and that's kind of been a debate about the nba before we get into talk about the money uh is that should they start on christmas because the nfl season is just so burning hot you know during in october and november um and the players have complained about it being too many games you know 82 games is too much. You hear LeBron was saying that a few years ago. A few other players think Dirk was in on that. But what you got to understand, when you cut the games down to 66 or and even in baseball, when you cut the games down to 60, there's a significant financial loss. And when you tell somebody there's a significant financial loss, oh, oh yeah, boss, I, I just play 82. You want me to play 162 games, like baseball, whatever they play? You understand the ramifications of that. So, um, you know, but to go on, you know, I ain't mad at him. You know what I'm saying? At some at some point, you gotta take a chance. We can't lie, we can't hide. We can't hide from this. The corona gonna be the corona, straight up and down. There's no cure, it's no vaccine. So you want everybody to stay in their house until it becomes a cure or vaccine. That's just impossible to regulate the whole world. So, you know what, man? I'm not knocking the NBA for doing what they gotta do, providing entertainment. I'm not knocking Major League Baseball for doing what they gotta do, but they spend a lot of money. And you know, to be honest. To be honest, they should have just cut they cut the teams down to 16. Had them play some warm up, a few preseason games, played the eight regular season games, and then you know that would have cut the risk factor, and it also would have cut the money factor. But you got some teams that ain't even sending nobody. You know DeAndre Jordan opted out. No Kyrie, no KD. Um, you know you got just some teams that you know right now Jokic won't be part of the Denver Nuggets till he test positive and be able to come over from Siberia. You know, it's just to the point where, you know, they should have had a play-in tournament with a few teams, but you know how that is. But they spent a lot of money on the bubble, man, so um, I ain't knocking it. You know, do what you do. Uh, we got to have something to do. I mean, they're supposed to have Black Lives Matter sayings on the back of people's jerseys. That sucks. And Black Lives Matter tatted across the court, which that sucks. It um, just seemed like they just trying to make it a joke. You know what I'm saying? We need real remedies for what's going on outside but we can't be responsible we can't have the nba responsible for that so um but you know that's how much they spending in medical costs and room and board and 
you know, they can't visit other people's rooms. And Damian Lillard said he's just going to hoop and chill. You know, he said he's going to hoop and chill. But the contrast is to what he said, he the, him and Stephen A. Smith, I heard, said they don't believe that the players are going to follow the protocol. So if you don't, if you get caught outside the bubble, I'm, I believe that they said it's going to be a fine, but you got to quarantine for 10 days. Once you quarantine for 10 days, you got to go deep nasal testing. And if you ain't took that corona test, I took it like twice. <laughs> You know, and that that cotton swab goes so far. And he's talking about deep. It's supposed to go like right here, but deep probably mean up in there. So that test ain't no fun. You know, before they do deep uh, testing on me, I quit. I just leave. Strap it down. I get to walk and hit the road, Jack. Because them going up this much in your nose, man, that's it burn. It agitates. And if you haven't took the corona test, it's some bull jive. All right? But. You know, he said, then Stephen A. Smith said they don't believe that players are going to follow the protocol. And what's so dangerous about it is, I feel that the NBA, you know, and Walt Disney does own what they're using. You know what I'm saying? But you got staff you got to pay that, you know, the people that work at the hotel and all them. You got to pay them hazard pay. But they should have went somewhere else that they didn't have as many cases like Montana. But does Montana have the amenities, you know? But they did build Michael Jordan a makeshift bubble for, for uh, for Space Jams, but, you know, this is the cheapest way for them because they own, Walt Disney actually owns the facility and owns the resort. So, but the bad thing about it is, is the fact that if you break the bubble, the, the COVID cases are so high in Florida, it is crazy. They still haven't mandated masks yet, and they still haven't shut back down. So if some player, player did leave the bubble to say, oh, I want some chicken from here, let me go here real quick, and even if we wear a mask, you know, maybe it'll be safe, but then again, you still got to quarantine for ten days and go, and go probably get fined. So, or I want to go get, you know, I want to go get some piece of, you know, piece of women, piece of pussy, you know. And, and some dudes and people got to understand. People say, oh, you can't go without sex for three months. I expect that answer from a woman, but from a, another dude, another male, a man, that got to be coming from somebody that ain't getting none. To go without some for three months, that's that's crazy, man. Some dudes can't go without it for twenty four hours. So you asking 22, you know, males, and most of them are alpha males to go without having sex for three months. That's crazy. And even uh, Brad Stevenson was trying to plead with the NBA about letting family come. He trying to get it in one time for the one time. You feel me? But, you know, am I concerned about players breaking the rules? You always got to be concerned when you have more people. Had they cut this down to 16 teams, then the risk would have been less. But it's always people sneaking. I was watching Glory Rose on Disney Plus yesterday. Remember, they were sneaking out, you know, going you know, to the other side of the border and partying and drinking. And, you know, you would think you got more mature people here, but some people need what they need. Some people need some. Some people need, you know, certain type of food. Some people need entertainment. And with Florida not being shut down, now if Florida, Florida was shut back down, it wasn't nothing pretty much open. I heard their restaurants wouldn't open at all or something like that. Um, then I would understand being there. So, you know, you got to stress to the players not to lead a bubble. But people already know, and players already hear the talking that some people are gonna hear the bubble, lead a bubble regardless, and if and they not taking the COVID seriously. So if you break that bubble, and you cause an outbreak in the bubble, you know, like you damn near should be banned, you know, banned, you know, from the NBA for a year or two. You should get that OJ Mayo, Tyreek Evans treatment. Real talk, that's how bad it is. And uh, Adam Silver also talked about before we get into Zion, he's already also talked about that if there's an outbreak in the bubble that they're going to have to cancel it. So you got to worry about the staffers. Like, when we talk about the staffers, we're talking about not the training staff or the coaches or, you know, personal trainers and stuff. we talking about, like, the people that work in a hotel. Like, we talking about them. You know what I'm saying? Those people that, the tile guy, the, the, the receptionist, the bellboy, I mean, the cooks. So you got to keep them in a bubble, too. So you got to pay them half to pay. You got to worry about them breaking the bubble and coming back and wanting to see their wives. So with the whole resort, you know what I'm saying, you not just worry about NBA players, coaches, and whoever else going to be there, trainers and stuff. You got to worry about the actual employees not leaving the bubble. So, you know, what is the penalty on them leaving the bubble, lose a job or whatever it is? So that's what you got to worry about as well too. So something to think about. But, you know, hopefully they're able to succeed, man, because uh, right now people need something to watch, some entertainment. And I, I kind of come to the grips that um, the economy takes precedence over life. It's just what it is because 
either way, life is going to get compromised before I get into Zion. And what I mean by that comment is, in certain places, I'm in Detroit. And we can't afford to have any more vacant buildings or vacant movie theaters. And if they get to the point where she shut back down with me and uh, unemployment stopped and they sent a little punk ass to a hundred dollar check, whatever it was, these dudes going to start scamming. They're going to start getting a gun and a mask. They're going to start running up in people's houses. And that's going to be almost everywhere around America. And white America won't get until they come into their house. And after they ravage through the city, some people might go out there. So, like I said before, it's just that, you know, either either they're going to start robbing and killing us or, or we got to protect ourselves. Or, you know, it's the COVID. So, you know, some businesses may not bounce back from another shutdown. You know, and that's the God honest truth. And the small businesses wasn't being able to get the, the money that they need, the relief that they needed because of the NBA. But... I mean, because of the, you know, they uh, they want to send the money out. The Lakers took some money they shouldn't have took. Uh, I think it was uh, Shake Shack took some money they weren't supposed to take. So, you know, it's crazy like that. Let's talk about Zion. I mean, I just prepared to go through, you know, I was talking to uh, Three Kings Boxing. He was on Twitter. You know, check them out, man. Twitter, they, uh, they cover boxing, but they know sports a lot, too. And one of the things that we were talking about was Jordan. And I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and say that probably was Bo on the Twitter account because he's from Chicago. And um, he was saying that Jordan earned his and Zion LeBron was given theirs. You know what? At first I disagreed, but I, I agreed because Jordan rookie year was phenomenal. Nobody expected Jordan to do what he did. And uh, he did earn his. So I will give it to Jordan from, from the beginning. At at one point, when he became the guest, when he became the, the guy, they were trying to push him past the Pistons. It was going to happen regardless. The Pistons was an older team. They kind of gave him an artificial push, but I'm not getting to that conversation. I mean, we talk about that later. We talked about it. But it seemed like they are. They forced LeBron down our throat. And that was cool. I, I was a big LeBron fan in the beginning just to kind of change, kind of as he changed as a player. He dancing at the end of benches and doing regular season games, mocking teams. And then in the playoffs, he melted down, um, saying that stuff after he lost to Dallas. Talking about y'all go back to y'all pathetic lives. Talking about the fans. All right, that is what it is, right? So Zion ain't done shit. He played for what? A month, a month and a half. And it was amazing. The way he was jumping, dunking, he was consistent. But what you have to talk about with Zion is this, all right? Because they're going to give him a massive push. He's a, he seems to be a great kid. What you got to talk about him with this? He came in the middle of the season with dudes or probably some rookies hitting the wall, some dudes tired. He came with a fresh player of legs. Of course, he was going to be dominating dudes on the court day in and day night. Can you do that for 82 games? You know what I'm saying? Not just for a, a small stretch in, in a period. That's the question. So he had an advantage, and they're going to try to make him co-rookie of the year. And if they do, man, like, it doesn't surprise me. The NBA is just, they always trying to look to push the next star. Let it happen. Magic and Bird in college, it just became good. You know what I'm saying? And then they made sure they got Bird in one draft to the Celtics, and they got Magic in another draft to the Lakers, and that's cool. You don't always have to artificially push. LeBron was going to be LeBron regardless, but y'all shove him down our throat every day, and that make people not like him. Don't do that with Zion. Let Zion become the dude in, 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 in New Orleans. I think, well, y'all, nobody's seen this from Giannis. You know what I'm saying? Giannis really, really blew up. You know, he blew up and went ham, and people like Giannis. They didn't have to push Giannis to shut Giannis down our throat. He's a fan favorite. You know, so let Zion become a fan favorite. It's no point of putting him on, excuse me, putting him on the cover of NBA 2K21. What has he done? <laughs> you know, Damian Lillard deserved to be on the cover, and I don't know. Where the fuck they started this? I know mean, I a few years ago they did three athletes. Like, dude, do one cover for the new gen and do one cover. No, just do one cover all of, all together. Let them have one athlete. Forget these three covers. They try to do everything. They try to do. I'm gonna talk about Madden too. I might drop that video first. They try to do everything but fix the fucking video game. They try to give you a, a better rock. They try to give you a, a better, you know, multiple cover athletes, a legendary pack with multiple VC. Instead of changing the game. 2K has progressively got worse. Because they haven't had no competition. Same thing with Madden. But, oh, we got time to cover. People going to buy it. You know, but with 2K, it just got bad. Got bad. You know, in the 2010s, it was pretty good. Early 2000s was good, too. But it got bad. But let Zion earn his spot, bro. They trying to give him the, the throne. And they need somebody to, you know, succeed, you know, um, LeBron James. But, you know, I like the kid, though. You know, I like his game. I like everything he's doing. I don't like Duke. 
Then like Brandon Ingram coming out of Duke, but he a baller. He got out of LeBron shadow, but you know it's premature. If you're gonna put a rookie on there, you should have put Ja. But I don't think no rookie deserves to be on, on on 2K, especially when they ain't played a full season. But I think Zion gonna be great. I think he's gonna be great for the league. And I wish they just organically let him, you know, become the face of the league. But we know how they go. But let me know what you guys think. Check our NBA Talk playlist. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you got business questions, quiet response, your video request, or you just want to chop it up, or you need some YouTube advice, or just you know you just want to debate, you know, behind the scenes, whatever it is. Twitter's the fastest way. Then IG and Facebook. We also got a Facebook group. Want to make a donation? Cash App, PayPal, description. Best way to donate. Share the video. One time for the one time we go.